Good morning. Welcome back to another and final edition of my Dollar Tree haul. Uh, and then I'm going to start another video, uh, maybe the next day or the day after. Um, what it is, is this is the last of the Dollar Tree that I had from the last uh, wave. And I'm going to show it in this video this morning. Um, I don't know how many I have in total, but they're all DVDs and Finally, I'm all wrapped up with this, guys, and um, it's been grueling for sure, but uh, I'd like to thank everybody that watched my last video. It clocked in somewhere near, up near north of uh, 300, and it's probably still going to get another 40, 50 views, so I'm flirting it with 400 views, and I don't know, I guess maybe going on Facebook a little more and, and um, doing some tweaking with the settings and stuff, maybe some more eyes got on the, you know, video or something, but I'm really gracious for that, I picked up another sub, I'm only one sub away from hitting 80, and when I do that, it's contest time, so here we go with the DVDs. First up, a movie starring Diane Agrin, Sean Ashmore, and Rachel Lefebvre, uh, Hollow Hollow in the Land, a small town, deadly secrets. Kind of has that uh, Lifetime Movie Network feel to it because of the part where it says small town, deadly secrets. So, oh, and that one was a vertical entertainment. Ninety nine minutes from two thousand seventeen. And then, I was lucky to get this. I think I might have had the DVD or Blu-ray of this already, but picked it up anyway. It sounded like it was loose, but it turns out it was a... Oh, I'll show you after I show you the movie here. Batman vs. Superman. Or, yeah, Donna Justice. The Warner Brothers release. 151 minutes on this one. I know it was long when I seen it at the theater, but I think it was that one. <clears throat> Includes over two hours of extras, uniting the world's finest, gods and men, and meeting of giants, the warrior myth, and the wonder, accelerating design, and the new Batmobile, and, and much more. Um, I've always been more of a Superman fan, to be honest. I thought they made Superman look really weak in this movie, in my honest opinion. Because honestly, I think Superman would be able to be Batman. That's just my opinion. I know why people like Batman. He's the more interesting of the two. Maybe a little cooler. But I don't think he could beat Man of Steel. Uh, I'm sorry. I think Superman would be the coup de grace in DC, honestly, outside of maybe Doomsday. Or, you know, somebody like that. Because he's, to me, he's he's not human. You know, he's from another planet. How, how is, how, realistically, how do they think he would stand a chance against Superman? I just, I know he's the more clever of the two. Because he has the background in, like, uh, chemistry and, and that kind of thing. But, but um, I, I just don't think he'd be... If anything, he'd be smarter than him because an alien, <laughs> they're far more advanced than, than a human being would be. And I just, I didn't like how they treated Superman. They, they basically treated Superman like a bitch in this one. So <laughs> that's what I felt. That's one of my big problems with this movie. It's kind of like what they did with Hulk later on in the Marvel films. They made him like not very destructive and kind of tame. I, I didn't like that. Uh... I, I was a little bit more understandable with that because I see what they were going for, but they just played on made Superman look like a wimp in this video, or in this movie, I mean. But, uh, there's that one. It has a lot of flaws, that movie, but I, I still enjoyed it. And then next up, I got Beyond the Mask. A really, really cool movie. It says World Magazine. It looked kind of cool. Uh, has the older actor from um, Indiana Jones in it. Um, I can't think of his name. 
Oh, John Rice Davies. He also played uh, the dwarf in uh, Lord of the Rings. I can't remember his name on that, that character, but this is 103 minutes. It has a slew of bonus features. Uh, 2015. It's rated PG, of course. Uh, they're saying it's on the same level as National Treasure and Zorro, according to Plugged In. A great movie for families that love history, action, adventure, and romance. Basically, this... Uh, a mercen uh, per uh, guy um, that's a mercenary for the British East India Company has just been double crossed and now is on the run in the American colonies working to redeem his name and win back the affections of his girlfriend uh, played by Kara Kilmer from Chicago Fire with whom he's never who, who he's never been truly been fully truthful I guess he's been probably running around on her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the EMT in Chicago Fire. I can't remember her name. She replaced, um, she replaced the one EMT in Chicago Fire that died tragically. Uh, she's the other uh, blonde EMT that went on to be with uh, Dawson, I think her name was. But then Dawson, I think, left the show. But uh, she's right there. <clears throat> but that looks kind of good. And then next up, we got a movie starring Ro uh, Susan Sarandon, Rose Byrne, and J.K. Simmons. It's called The Meddler, written and directed by Maureen Scafaria. Scafaria. Uh, it's charming and subtle and funny. This is Roger, well, Rex Reed. RogerEbert.com gives it four out of four stars. Special features, commentary of Susan Sarandon and Lorene Scafaria, Gag Reel, The Real Marnie, and The Making of the Meddler. This is PG-13, approximately 103 minutes. Uh, it's a Sony Pictures classic. Um, this lady right here, right here, I believe that's Rose Byrne. Um, she played in a teacher in one of the latest X-Men. I believe it was the one where Quicksilver was kind of reenacting that slow that slow motion thing where he's freezing time, but he was speeding through it. She is a teacher. I think he had a thing for her because there was a scene in there that uh, he was trying to rescue all the people out of the building, and it came to her part where she was going to get blown up in the explosion, and he, like, took her arm and he held it up like he's dancing at her and he blew her a kiss. It was really funny. <laughs> funny seeing that part. But that's that's the that's the girl right the actress right here. She also played I think the neighbors one and two with uh, Seth Rogan. So you know I think you should know who I mean with those hints but or with that you know all those facts. And then next up we got a movie with John O'Hurley, Eric Roberts and Helen Slater. It's uh, called A Remarkable Life, Finding Acceptance and Love Wins. Uh, this is basically, uh, oh, it's, yeah. It also stars Chris Bruno, Marie, Ab Abra Garopoulos. Uh, I, I, that's a very hard name. I think that might be uh, Greek. And Daphne Zuniga. Uh, Daphne Zuniga here played... Uh, Princess Vespa in uh, Spaceballs. Uh, my wife got this. I didn't even something I picked up. But this is uh, 97 minutes. It's considered a drama romance. It's, it's an E1. Uh, it's an E1 uh, release here. I want to say. I want to say that she might have played in the 100. I'm not sure though. Uh, there are many things in life that could do a number on a man's masculinity. Lenny, Lenny Babbitt has his identity and manhood challenged when his wife, Daphne Zuniga, lives him, leaves him for a female doctor who's been treating her autistic son. So, she likes these kind of movies. I could do with or without them, but the last one was, was hers as well. But we did pick these two up. It might be alright. 
see this one this one I don't mind this one looks like it could be a low of interest but it has a more intri more interesting story to it based on the novel, novel Life at, the, at These Speeds by Jeremy Jackson still stars Billy Crudrup, Graham Rogers, Leona Liberato, Stephanie Scott, and Tim Roth. One mile to you, run with your heart. This is from Gra Gravitas Ventures, or Gravitas Ventures. Um, this is from 2017. Can't read the back though, because, like, right off the bat, I mean, it, it gives away a major plot point in this already. And I think it'd be better to just go in blind on this one, because if I read that first line, that's already going to set you up for heartbreak. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to read that, because I think that, that line should be omitted from the synopsis. At least the way they wrote it. That's uh, one mile to you. I don't recognize anybody in there but Tim Roth and Billy Kudrup. Kudrup. I guess I, it's a different way to say somebody's name. I've never very rarely seen that last name before, other than with Billy's name. Uh, bonus full length video ready for school. 123 Sesame Street. Preschool is cool. Making friends. It says learn about friendship, problem solving, appreciating differences. So it teaches a number of things in this. Uh, I think it's trying to like um, hit home the message about, you know, everyone's you know, on the same level in, in this world, you know, no one's better than somebody because of the color of their skin, or that's a pretty good message to send, especially with all the rioting and things like that going on now, uh, protesting, uh, playing together, and what is a friend, uh, has an uh, English and Spanish subtitles, a bonus full-length video ready for school, this is a Warner Brothers release, it's from the Sesame Workshop from 2012. Back. I don't know if I can get it good so you can see it here. And then I think I might have got this before, but this was a Kmart exclusive. And this makes me feel really even like better about it because uh, being Kmart, I used to love Kmart. Kmart to me was my Walmart. Um, Times came and went, and this store just kind of went the way of big lots. Kind of went, started going empty a lot of the time. Like the one here in town, the, the big lots here is starting to look a lot like Walmart, where there's like hardly anybody in the store. Oh, it's the historic battles that shaped history, the big battles of war, 10 documentaries. Like I said, I'm happy that it was a Kmart, though, because I at least have some nostalgia factor going on here. Because I really like that store. Just unfortunate. I think there might be some stores still left, but I'm not sure. But it's from this uh, physical copy here. It's from 2012 Echo Bridge Home Entertainment. Uh, I'm not going to read all the battles, because I, I, I think I'm pretty much read all these before, but it, there's there's uh, ten, 10 battles here, 10 features, that are over 8 hours, so I mean, if you want to spend all day to, you know, you could watch this in the whole 8 hours, you'd have all this, I think it's more than one disc, it, it feels heavy, it could be two, maybe three, but uh, they're all about shy of an hour each. Yeah, they're all about 49 to 52 minutes out of the 10, so. Um, featured films are Pearl Harbor, A Day of Infamy, The Battle of Berlin, Death of the City, and The Battle of Normandy. So, you have this, and you have eight hours to spend on a rainy day, or, you know, with uh, summer winding down, you, can, you know, spend Labor Day sitting around watching that. And then next up, I got 
a widescreen presentation of uh, playing for keeps. This too was my wife's pickup. Here's a lot of my wife's pickup and this and that and for my son Joseph. Uh, it says big dream, small town, rock and roll, playing for keeps. This looks like it could be a really old one. <clears throat> now we're in 43 minutes. <clears throat> They'll be, they'll be surround 185 by one. An ambitious trio of inner city high school grads try to hit the big time by turning a rundown country hotel into a rock and roll resort with around the clock music and live entertainment. Standing in their way are fearful townsfolk, unscrupulous businessmen and a tax collector, all threatening to bring their curtain down on the teen's aspirations. But this is one threesome who refuses to give up their lifelong goal without a fight in a song. Written and directed by, eh, I don't want to say their names because I didn't know this was a, their, I don't want to give them any shine because of what they did. Uh, featuring Marissa Tomei, this exuberant musical boasts an awesome soundtrack featuring Phil Collins, Pete Townshend, Julian Lennon, Arcadia. Arcadia uh, was really the lead singer uh, Simon LeVon from uh, Duran Duran. He uh, went his way during the 80s and wanted to do a bit of a solo career. That's what he named the band was Arcadia. Uh, Peter Frampton, Sister Sledge, and many more. Playing for Keeps truly celebrates the determination to succeed against impossible odds. Yeah, I'm not reading who directed it because uh, it was a big scandal in Hollywood with these directors, so... Here's the back. I don't want to give them any shine. They don't deserve it. It's scummy what they did to those actresses. Um, thrilling and brutal stuff. I heard this is really good. Uh, it's called Dead Man Shoes. Uh, Patty Con Considine. And a film by Shane Meadows. Revenge is in all of us. It's a Magnolia Home Entertainment release as well. Uh, this is no simplistic vigilante movie. It explores the nature of the beast of revenge, leaving the audience in the sweat of dread, said Jamie Bernard from the New York Daily News. Uh, it's 90 minutes. It's from 2004. Uh, 16 by 9. Richard, or Petty Constantine, has always protected his simple-minded little brother, Anthony. When Richard leaves the rural village where they have grown up to join the army, Anthony is taken in by Sonny controlling and vicious local drug dealer in his gang. Anthony becomes the gang's plaything and is relentlessly tormented and ridiculed. Seven years later, Richard returns to settle the score. One by one, he hunts down each member of the gang and executes them in increasingly elaborate ways as flashbacks reveal the extent to which his brother suffered at their hands. I don't know if this is supposed to be like a revenge slasher kind of film. That's what kind of, like, mixed with, uh, kind of like a mafia gang kind of thing but uh it sounds like this uh, uh, guy's uh, baby brother uh, <laughs> really takes it out on the group he must have done some really bad things to him because it shows him carrying wheedling an axe right here so I'm assuming it might uh, go all Jason Voorhees on some of them maybe uh, special features audio commentary with Shane Meadows Patty Constantine Considine, Mark Herbert, Shane Shoes, Featurette, Deleted Scene, and an Alternate Ending. Let's see. This is a Sony Pictures Classics. I think my wife got this one too. It's from the director of last year at Marion Mar Greenbad and Hiroshima Mon Monomore. Wild Grass, a film by Alan Resnice. A constant, confounding delight, says Richard Kyle Corliss from Time Magazine. I haven't seen many of these in anything, so I showed my wife, I go, you want that? She goes, yeah, maybe. Might be alright. 104 minutes. Oh, it's 
Okay, this movie's French, but it has English subtitles, so she's not going to be down with that. <laughs> uh, it's a psychodrama, sex farce, tragedy, comedy. Uh, it's a masterpiece of all things. It says Keith Oleg from Time Out, New York. Yeah. You're going to like having to read it. She's not much of a I, I'm not really per se, but if it's something I really want to watch, I'll, you know, sit through it. But I'd rather watch it alone so I can kind of read it in my my mind, you know, instead of having to read it aloud when we're watching it. Because that gets really hard to keep up with. <laughs> and then I got another one of these. I watched this. House of Salem. I really like this. I thought this was damn good. I just think this might be one of my best wild, one of my best wild I have watched recently, honestly. There's another one I watched too. Um, what was it? I don't know. I can't remember what it was, but I don't know if I have it over there, but. Maybe if I, you know, in another video, if I remember what it was, I can show it, but this was really good. This wasn't what I was expecting at all, because it made it sound like it was going to be entirely, you know, like this, but then it had, like, a, a twist, a twist in the story, and I just was really hooked with this the entire way. Yeah, it was, it was really good. While I can make stuff like this, I'd be more than willing to love to review their stuff. Because I was really impressed with this movie. It's called The House of Salem. It stars Jessica Arterton, Liam Kelly, Andrew Lee Potts, and Flynn Allen. Uh, it's from 2016, 100, 100 minutes running time, and it's a region zero. It's a 5.1 stereo. I kind of thought it did because it had really good sound. Then I got another one of these. I was, thought maybe somebody might want it because it's a book. Uh, it's a winner of the Best Picture, Best Documentary Surfer Poll Award, Surfer Magazine from 2008. And it's in a book form. See this? Just like a book, you know, a hardcover book. Uh, Busting Down the Door. On screen media films um, from 2008. Uh, the groundbreaking action-packed documentary takes you back to the winter of 1975 in Hawaii. A dramatic moment in history when a group of young South African and Australian surfers sacrificed everything. They put it all on the line to create a sport, a culture, an industry that is today worth billions of dollars and has captured the imagination of the world. A powerhouse film, the spellbinding action footage, and fascinating subjects make busting down the door a surfing classic. And there's a whole slew of people that say good things about this movie, so. This is 5.1 surround, 96 minutes. If I didn't say that. There's back. Like I said, how can you go wrong with a book, you know? You're basically getting a book in this. I don't know if it comes with pages or if it's one of those movie did you? Yeah, it comes with pages, too. I'd open it, but I don't know. It's just, it just seems like it's better still in the plastic for now, at least. And then I got a couple uh, reading rainbows here. Man's Best Friend and Desert, Desert Life. Um, from 2006. They're both from 2006. It has two episodes on here. Uh, Desert Giant. Alejandro's Gift on this one. And Episode 1, Martha Speaks, and Episode 2, The Adventures of the Taxi Dog. Um, has uh, bonus segments on here as well, guys. Uh, basically, Reading Rainbow brings great books to life on screen through rich illustrations and celebrate narr narrators. Each ep episode introduces kids to the, to the interest, interest, interesting new people and places. 
and explores important social and cultural issues that offer kids a close-up look at the world around them. Uh, these are basically learning. These would be perfect during, like, what's going on with school. Like, we got little ones. Like, they're kind of like preschool. That kind of age group. Not that little or even a little older kids could watch it too, but they might find it kind of boring because they already know that kind of stuff. But but uh, it's more for the preschool kind of age. But the, these have been around for years. But uh, and then here's the last one I got. I think I've gotten this one before. <laughs> but my wife said asteroid final impact, and I'm like, oh, this is the, 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 the cheap cheesy disaster film. Get it. This comes complete with two bonus movies from Michael Bridge from 2018. Uh, first one is, first bonus movie is Project Viper, and second one with that is Dark Breed. Uh, Project Viper is 85 minutes, rated R. Stars Patrick Muldoon and Teresa Russell. Dark Breed stars... Jonathan Banks and Jack Scalia. And that one's 101 minutes. Rated R for strong sci-fi event. So Dark Breed is a sci-fi movie. Um, I'm not sure what the other one. But uh, there's a total of almost 300 minutes between the three movies there. Yeah, I can't read read the back about what this is about because they had to go and put a sticker that half of it, but uh, still a lot of Echo Bridge in this uh, haul still, I'm hoping that kind of, we thinned it all out with all the movies everybody bought, but man, it just seems like they keep coming out with more Echo Bridge, I'm not complaining, because if you can get different Echo Bridge, it's fine, but if you keep getting ones you've already gotten, it gets kind of uh, mundane, you know, it's, it gets kind of uh, repetitive, and it's you know, then they're only good for extras and stuff after that. Or if you wanted the new slip cover or something that's a little bit better than the one you got before or something, it's in better condition. But, but uh, yeah, I don't really like it when the ends are bent like that a little bit. See, it's like that right there a little bit. But, uh, yeah, that concludes the haul I had for the last part of, uh, the Dollar Tree this time around. I'd like to thank everybody for watching the last video. Uh, it's such a huge number. It's my biggest video to date that, I, that I've that i noticed based on the numbers I've looked at. Um, please share, like, and subscribe. Um, I'm going to try to do a video uh, maybe tomorrow. I don't know if I will have time, but if I don't, it'll be the next day. Uh, that's going to be a trade video, but I've wrapped up Officially, all of the Dollar Tree I've had, it's somewhere over the $100 range. Because, uh, man, my wallet's really feeling it after this last phase. Uh, or wave, however you want to say it. Um, but uh, thank you for watching, and thank you for taking in Gary's Movie Emporium. And you all stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.